We're going live in three, two, one. In this episode of Road to Even Talk Pinball, we're going to talk to special guest Dan Burfield of Tilt Cycle. And extra special guest Dave Fix from Pinball Expo. All Coming right. up. Let's do this. Double Super Jackpot! What's going on, Internet and uh, podcast listeners? It is Monday, October 10th. I'm Nick Lane. I'm Kevin Manny. And uh, Kevin, what do we have in store for this evening? Uh, well, so we're bringing in our second guest uh, via Skype ever, uh, one Dan Burfield from Field Burfield Cycle. from Field Cycle. Oh. And uh, I'm hearing and, myself uh, back. I'm hearing myself back. Computer, because computer, why not? Because why? Been going to shit. This, this is, uh, we're only 40 uh, minutes late on our live, live, live Twitch uh, stream, so, so if you're, you're listening, listening to this, you know, this, you days know, later days and later, it sounds smooth, believe me, it is nothing but an anxiety attack. I just so, want to take, so my, I want to take my table, table and throw it, throw it, tip it over right now. That would give me so much satisfaction. But um, So I just want to say, we... When was the last time we did a uh, a podcast? It was has to be over a month. It's over a month. So, of course, there's a lot that's happened in this month, I think when we uh, did the podcast, they just showed some pictures for um, Stern's uh, new Batman game. At least, no, they just teased the idea of the Batman game. Yeah, right? we, so were, we, we talked had, about we that. Saw, yeah, we saw the flyer. We said, what the hell is the Super LE? Now we know yeah. it's going to be $15,000. It's all sold out. Nobody's even seen a play field yet. We won't. We won't dive into that. <laughs> the, the point being, there's so much to talk about, but um, we're just gonna uh, focus on our guests tonight, and then we're gonna do a podcast, I believe, next week, and we're gonna recap every as much as we can from Expo, and we'll talk about all that's going on in the pinball world. So it's gonna be about a five-hour uh, podcast at that point. <laughs> exactly, uh, exactly. But before we bring on Dan, let's just uh, let's thank our partners. Uh, let's do that. Okay. You thank the partners. I got to call Dan back because our call just died. Why wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. So you thank the partners. Uh, all right. Let's see if I can do it from memory. Can I see the partners? <laughs> you can. Hopefully. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> all right. These are uh, the folks who support us and help make the stream happen, the podcast happen. So consider supporting them when you need uh, uh, some pinball machines, some pinball parts, and some art. So first is Comet Pinball. They make LEDs. Uh, they have basically every kind of LED you can want. Uh, perfect way to dress up your game. I put all common LEDs in my machines, or I'm at least changing over um, some maybe LEDs from like five years ago. Then we have Pinball Life, which is a mainly a part supplier for pinball. So you need some parts for your pinball machine. Check out Pinball Life. They support us. Uh, excellent customer service from Terry. I've been using them ever since I got my first pinball machine. Uh, awesome, awesome prices, awesome support. Then we have Jersey Jack Pinball, of course, maker of the uh, this is this is my tagline, but maker of the most beautiful pinball machines in the world. Because awesome. you can have that, Jack. It's cool. Yep. And uh, they got a big announcement coming out this week at Expo. So looking forward to that. Yeah. So and then uh, Pinball Arcade, maker of uh, recreations. Uh, they make virtual pinball machines, but of, of real pinball machines, really cool. Which has gotten me and I'm sure a lot of our listeners into pinball. Uh, check them out. They just released Doctor Who. For uh, iOS, Android, PS4, Xbox, and I probably forgot something. Uh, Titan Pinball, uh, maker, uh, I guess they're most known for their silicon rings, so uh, flipper flipper rings for your uh, pinball machines, uh, uh, rings like ring kits. Uh, great because they're silicon, they last much longer. Uh, use coupon code BUFFALO for 10% off. And then finally, this guy, Dan Bur Bur Burfield. Bur Burfield? Uh, Tilt Cycle? Uh, he makes ah, some art, yeah. and uh, he's going to tell us all about that. He's got a coupon code, too. 20%. Oh, my God. He's, like, giving it away. <laughs> Just use coupon code BUFFALO. See, all of our partners that have coupon codes, BUFFALO. We made it easy for you guys. We love it. All right. So, speaking of Dan, let's see. He, we just dropped his Skype call. Let's see if we can, uh, if we can bring can him back here. I can't see. Dan, are you there? I'm there. I just can't And is your mic you. on mute? No, it's not. No, we just need to turn it back us. on now. All right. Just assume that we're the problem. Okay. Can we hear you? I, I can hear you. Awesome. I mean, that's... Good to go. Yeah. So, Dan Burfield from Tilt Cycle, uh, tell us a little bit about, before we get into the Tilt Cycle thing, why don't you tell us 
how you got into pinball, what interests you about pinball, and why you do the pinball thing at all. I will do that, but I can't see you. You can't see us? No. Well, I'll work on that while you tell us about that. As long as you can hear us, just me, it's not worth it, even the effort. That's fine. Yeah, I don't need to make eye contact where it's not even lining up. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so and this is the first the first interview like this. I've done podcasts, and it's different. You don't have to dress nice. Um, pinball, around 2000, someone gave me a Gottlieb 66. It didn't work. Lit up. It's pretty. And then I traded it for a Joker poker, which I had for four years. And then ever since then, it was awesome. And then I was obsessed with pinball, joined league. We pretty much started Pittsburgh Pinball League. I want to say in 2006, 2007, grew that from seven people to, I think they're about 200 and something now. And I don't have time with a baby and a, a, or a four-year-old and a baby on the way in uh, the spring. So I um, got into pinball art when I started. I was an artist in the 90s with bands and uh, you know, like Nine Inch Nails stuff. And that was just too s and gothic, and, and I got out of it. And so then um, I started getting back into art when I was um, dating my wife. And a friend of mine in Pittsburgh, a big pinhead, asked me to do an art show themed, uh, pinball themed art show. So I did. And uh, and then that was incredible because of walking into the, in the parking lot, I sold a piece. And I was like, hey, people like this stuff. So I'm going to do more of it. But uh, Are you guys there? Yeah, we're here. Okay. <laughs> we're sure. enthralled. Yeah. You know we we, we, we need to know the Dan Burfield story. The Dan Burfield story. And then I was arrested in prison. No. And then um, – so I did that for a couple years. And then I started my Etsy site. And at, at that time, it was just kind of pinball-related jewelry. Um, and then fast forward, I think it really took off – with the night light, the pop bumper cap night lights, which was just, I thought it was a pretty simple design, but I sell a ton of those around Christmas and birthdays and bar mitzvahs. So those are, those are pretty big. And then um, some people started giving me garbage pinball stuff. I was buying, you know, really cheap EMs and the, and the guy would be like, Hey man, you want to play field with that? Like, okay. And then that's when I got into like cutting the, best of the play fields you know it's like roached play fields with a little bit of art on them and then framing them uh under glass and then people love that a lot so i've been doing a lot of those and i think right now i'm up to about f- almost 40 something play fields on hand um and in addition to that i'm doing um cabinets um i'm getting all these old cabinets that are that are being well the, i have a guy who guts machines and and parts them out on ebay and then whatever's left over and that includes he takes the inserts and everything which is fine because then i get to reuse all my broken plastics that i get from another guy and um and then sometimes i get inserts from like steve young and add those to um stuff and you'll see in that rock piece anyway um so that's just kind of how it's been. And once once I did replay effects and saw how people really enjoyed this stuff, um, that and that was in 2015. This year I did more traditional gallery art. Um, and so I did uh, the Three Rivers Arts Fest for five days. And and like I don't know how many people were coming out of the woodwork just like I love pinball. And I, hey man, I got one in the basement. So I bought I bought one machine and then I had another machine and on hand or you know on, on, like a lead. And I didn't buy that one. He wanted, he wanted eBay prices for an old game. So, um, yeah, and I, I made a coffee table out of the one. And so that's just kind of how it's – this year has been larger items and more art shows, not, not as much um, conventions. So I think next year I'd like to try and do both, like Replay Effects and the Three Rivers Arts Fest. So – so uh, you said the pop up or nightlight was kind of the thing that put you on the map. Does that continue to yeah. be your best seller, or what? What what is the most popular thing you sell these days? Probably that. I mean, it's I'll have people in my booth at Three Rivers where like, kind of like I love this stuff, but I don't know that I that I can afford anything. But then, so then as they're exiting, I have all the nightlights. I have like thirty lit up, 
and they say, well, I really want something. So they get that. And then I bundle, you know, two for uh, 25E's or two for 40. Some people generally buy two. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's got to be the biggest seller because it's the price point that people like and it's lower. And So my funny story is um, this is like two yeah. or three years ago. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> you messaged me. You're like, do you know someone named Don in Buffalo? I was like. Uh, my boss is named Don. And it's like, okay, all right. And this is around Christmas time. So it turns out my, my boss got me. It's kind of like a, a Christmas gift, uh, a pinball nightlight because he knows I'm obsessed with pinball. And then lo and behold, he had no idea that I knew you or, or any of that. Yeah. So th that was my first birthday. Together, I was like, oh, it's the only guy I know in Buffalo that likes pinball. Because you came down to re or you came down to Papa by well, yourself. You're like, this is amazing, man. And we were like, you want a beer? And you're like, oh, that's, well, that's awesome. the story I was going to tell. I was going to say, this is how I know Dan Burfield. My history is in 2011. He's the guy who gave me a beer in the parking lot. <laughs> and I was only 18 years old. And here we are. I, I kid. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. Now he's on our podcast. He's making art. Go figure. <laughs> that was a good investment. That was a good, that was a good beer. You picked the, the right, uh, right candidate for that. <laughs> and then, uh, my other, um, I got a, I got a piece of artwork. I got your play field, uh, the genie that I always like brag about and show on our uh, our Twitch stream because I love it. And that's like I've got that hanging up in my basement. So it's the, it's the genie play field. There's lights in the back of it, and the lights you can kind of rotate. They kind of come on and off. You can do different patterns, but it looks awesome there. And everybody who sees it, I always get compliments. It's like my it's my favorite piece of art. So thank you for uh, thank you for doing what you do, man. Do good work. Yeah, thank. You. Yeah, you, you, you having it there, um, I think Nate saw it there, Shivers, and so he got a Flight 2000, mm -hmm. and that's awesome. And then um, and then Jeff bought one, Worth, yep. and uh, and so that's awesome. That's it's, it's good. I like I like to not have to cut play fields, um, even if they're kind of roached. I don't know if you saw my Sorcerer recently. That's It made the, uh, yeah. um, the belt-sanded gallery. Because it is belt, <laughs> but I still kind of saved it, and the guy loves it. It's just whatever's left on it. I, um, I've been doing more of a like a contour cut for whatever might be left on a playfield, and so that's that's pretty interesting stuff too. So, what is the range like? Let's say somebody we talked about night lights. We talked about the cost of that. I think the coolest thing you have are the playfields. Um, that's probably your, yeah. your most expensive item. What what are, what's like the range of that? If somebody's thinking about getting one. Um, range on that is like, it just depends on the, the obviously the, the play field. Um, I bought, so last night's story is I went to buy a blackout because I have a friend, uh, pinball podcast friend of that show and he's looking for like a space theme and he was kind of like not really digging galaxy, even though I think it's amazing, uh, play field. And so I said, well, maybe if I get a blackout, his friend's selling a blackout and maybe he'll enjoy it. And so I get up there, and of course I I leave the house with seven playfields, and so I've got Pink Panther and um, Space Invaders and um, another Alien Poker. So it's the second one I've had this year, but um, it's pretty. Those are pretty awesome. Better playfields would be a little bit more expensive, only because you know they're they're probably way cooler than than some boring '70s EM um, with little artwork. Some of the some of the artwork is, is not that interesting, but um, it, it, then again, it, it always depends on what speaks to somebody, if that's the game that was in their dad's arcade or whatever, that kind of stuff. So, um, and I'm always surprised at what people pick. So my, my ideas are not always translated into my audience and uh, directly. Sure. So yeah. basically I would say um, prices are bet between 150, depending on the play field and, and on up, and um, I think two fifty is the highest. Ever. So, like, if you had a hard body, it'd be like five hundred dollars. Because just the, the the beauty of it. It's a pretty awesome playfield. <laughs> All those packs on the playfield, man. Oh, and then if you spray it down with water, oh, uh. <laughs> let's not go there on the. Could podcast. you get it? Maybe so. It has like a like a like a fountain effect. <laughs> this is a kind of dripping. Oh yeah, I could do like the yeah like the the um. What were those in the in all those religious painting or those religious things that had like fiber optics in them? In yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the whitewater topper. I want that. Um, and I pro probably the highest um, back to, back to the high price 
Uh, the coffee tables are, are probably the most expensive because they're the hardest to find. Cool. It's hard to find um, a, a play field and a machine that can't be restored. And so I, I've had a couple this year that were just like 1940s flipperless games that are beautiful, but I don't know anybody other than Nick Baldridge that would take the time to really restore it. And um, so it's, it's, and that's also something I should mention is my policy. I don't cut anything that can't be restored or within reason can be restored. Um, and so with that pinball, Nick ran an ad on his show and, and said, if anybody's interested, contact Dan. So I gave it like, I think like two months and I didn't hear anything from anyone. So it turned into a coffee table and, and it's nice. now in somebody's living room. And quite honestly, there's not a lot modified that you couldn't go back and take it back to its original if you wanted. The only things I'm really doing is um, lowering the, the legs and putting LEDs on the back and, and stuff like that. So anyway, that's uh, – I'm glad you brought that up because someone recently I don't I don't know who it was where I was but they were we were talking about your work and he liked it but he's like it's a shame that he destroys you know what can be used as pinball parts and I'm thinking I don't think Dan is is using things that somebody would be buying and, and swapping out like a playfield for in their machine like they're they're pretty much spent at that point yeah yeah I for instance the pop bumper night lights you can always take the caps right off. Um, some guys glue them, and I think that's going to be harder to, you know, pull apart or whatever. Not that it's d destroying it, but if you add you add other holes to it, um, yeah, everything is like. I mean, I'm going through a guy who is getting anything of value he can. He's basically a scrapper, and then whatever's left, he doesn't want to pay refuse. So that's what I'm getting, and then. Sometimes, like, like I had to trash a play field because it was so waterlogged with mold. Um, it was a beautiful – it was a surf champ, and the front was amazing. And then I cut into it with, like, full 3M mask goggles and everything, and it was just, like, blue cheese. So, yeah, there's a lot. And to be honest, I saved a, a Twilight Zone cabinet recently that went through – we had Hurricane Ivan come through Papa – this is many years ago, and mm. all the machines were water, you know, waterlogged. And sometimes, like some of those Williams cabinets are amazingly durable. So the bottoms were gone in most of those games, but the the plywood was it was fine. And so it, it had been treated, and it was you know. So now I cut it up and, and made it into a collage, and it's it's sitting pretty in Seattle. So nice. So about a month ago, you announced a partnership with Measle Mods. Why don't you tell us a little yeah. bit about that? <laughs> So that came out of – I worked for a, a Seattle company that worked with Domino's, which is a great tie-in. Um, Domino's had changed from Domino's Pizza to Domino's. So they had, I guess, you know, thousands of pizza boxes that they couldn't use anymore. And this company came up with the idea to contact this corporate uh, company and then have them donate all their excess that they can't use to this upcycler. So this guy made – so somehow they found me through Upcycle That or some other website, and we started talking about, you know, just doing my products on her site for, for upcycling. Um, that company fizzled out, and then I was speaking with Measle Mods, and I said, do you have any, you know, in your product design, do you have any prototypes that are, you have, you know, waste byproduct? And yes, we, they have a bit, so they sent me a bunch of stuff, and I made a bunch of... Um, the uh, um, well, it's um, plunger mods, um, and it, it's like thing from um, Adam's family. So I made a, a couple sculptures out of that, and then I've got a bunch of other parts that I'm, I'm upcycling into stuff. So when they're doing their 3D prototyping, um, sometimes things don't come out right, and then that's basically garbage. So they sent me all their garbage, and then I'm giving it a second chance. So. That's we did cool. that a couple we, – we announced that, I think, a month and a half ago. I sold some things um, through that. And then I made a design about, I don't know, a week and a half ago, two weeks, about uh, skulls for Halloween, the uh, Day of the Dead skulls. And oh, yeah, those are cool. I saw those. Crazy. Yeah. So she was like, well, why don't we sell 
some of those on our site, see how they go, international, et cetera. Um, and I said, that's great. So we're um, launching that product today. Um, Wait, along is with, this your world premiere? Should we play the intro? Just, hold on, I have a world premiere. All right, here comes the world premiere. <laughs> All right, give us the world premiere. World premiere, I'm, I'm selling on Mieselmont. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I did not see that coming. <laughs> awesome. So you're going to be able to buy uh, Tilt Cycle products on not only TiltCycle.com, but also on Mieselmont.com, correct? Yes. So uh, oh. what kind of products will, will be up on, on Mieselmont for people to buy? So the thing about Mesa mods is it's it's reproducible mods, and they have great stuff for Ghostbusters. They have great stuff for ACDC and all that kind of thing. But those are reproducible products. Art is generally one of a kind. So we were like, well, what do you have that could be reproducible and that we could sell in quantity if, if people need it? And I have three items, and that's the skulls. Um, now, they are one of a kind in that you can have male or female skulls, Within a limit, I think I only have 19 skulls total for for now until I guess next Halloween when I can get get more supply. And that's kind of the problem. You can't get supply in this in an upcycling type of business. You, you can't keep a, a consistent product because it's limited and you've recycled whatever was once garbage. But so so if you understand that, it's difficult to do a product like this. But we're listing I think 11 products today. Um, so it's different uh, pop bumper night lights. Um, they're all customizable in that you can have a male or a female. The female basically looks the same, except she doesn't have a mustache. Um, and then the other two products are the Brida Pinbot clocks, um, only because I know I have like a, a bazillion of those. Um, the coasters are the, the three and a half inch or three and three quarters um, diameter. So they're big enough to have like a nice little wall clock. And they're Python Angela. They're the art is amazing and, and hypnotic. Um, so those will be on there. And then my um, – so if you look at a coin door, there's the 25-cent returns. Those are the coin reject buttons, and they sell those. And so I've made those and made my own little design to make those LED night lights. And those are those are crazy. People – that's – you know, I should back up. As far as night lights go, those are the most – People have the most interest in those. And I was actually on fail blog with that. But as far as the uh, the winds, because they have like a section to actually be uh, positive about something. <laughs> that's that's good. Fail. That's yeah, a good thing yeah. you specified that. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Like, yeah, I was interested like, to see where this is going. It seems like a real positive thing, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's wind blog. I don't know. <laughs> wind blog, yeah. But yeah, that was, that was on there. And then it got on Tumblr somehow and those things have been in the – and it was really just an accidental – thing i bought the wrong nightlight and then i had this extra thing and i just like really offhandedly at the end of a of a session of building something i put those two together and then posted it and people just went bonkers and so it's always kind of a surprise with like these skulls i thought were kind of cool kind of cool and then it, it was like oh my god i didn't know how crazy people were going to go over them unfortunately i came into to this idea or this discovery late in the game of Halloween stuff. So it's, it's a, a local place that I'm buying these and, and then modifying them in the end. And they're pretty cool though. They're plaster and they weigh uh, 2.8 pounds. So they're pretty solid. And um, I fill them with lights and then um, put um, two, you know, screw on two pop bumper caps and they look pretty awesome. And it's again, it's like, I, I have a hell of a time getting uh, used pop bumper caps. So that's um, something I try to buy in bulk and um, recycle used stuff. Because a lot of the stuff that people don't want are pop bumper caps that have burn in and stuff like that. But that kind of gives it that that used look, the patina that everybody is going for. And, and uh, so that's what those have. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, I didn't have any more questions, Ben. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Anything else you want to share with the, the loyal listeners of Brody? You can talk pinball before we let you go. Um, no. Um, before, well, yeah, one last thing. I'm, I've am i been running a sale. Any large item, uh, lit play fields. Like I said, I got a bunch of, I got a Pink Panther one, and that's 
I can't wait to light that up because it's amazing. I may it may even actually just go in the living room unless somebody <laughs> is really into it because um, I have the one next to the TV. So I'm I'm offering 150. Or I'm offering um, fifty dollars off anything over 150, and that is let play fields. Um, that is also includes my cabinet neon and stuff. Um, so that's between now and Halloween. So. Um, yeah, you guys, you guys mentioned it uh, a couple shows ago, so I appreciate. And I got some got some interested people for that, so thank you. So yeah, correct me if I'm wrong though, but what I what I've had been encouraging people to do is that if they don't see something on your site, but they have yeah. like a concept or idea, that I encourage them to reach out to you and say, "Here's what I'm thinking," or "Here's the style yeah. of artwork I want," or "I like the seventy error machines." Like, what can you do? Um, that they should definitely do that, right? Yeah, I had a, a actually one of the skulls. The girl said, "Here's what I want: an all black skull with pop bumper, a certain pop bumper." And I said, "Okay, so I'll, I'll find them for you. I don't have the pop bumpers, but I found them." So she's excited. Yeah, that and like I just had a guy today want to do want me to do a uh, out of a pinball play field a cut out of the Weezer logo. So I do that. Nice. So, yeah. Very cool. Well, yeah. uh, thank you for joining us, Dan. So our our uh, listeners our watchers, our followers, they can go to uh, tiltcycle.com, check out your stuff. And, uh, go to, you can go to the Instagram thing, and I'm now on Twitter, as you guys saw. Oh, yeah, welcome what, aboard. Because somebody really was trying boring. to steal your name, right? Someone's been, some, yeah, bicycles. Because <laughs> I think a tilt, every time I go, I should get on my bike and go to my cycling class. Um, <laughs> I'll tilt forward, I guess. So it's whatever. Awesome, cool. Dan. So, yeah, check out Dan on Instagram, Twitter, or uh, at tiltcycle.com. Dan, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being a sponsor Thank you, Dan. of uh, Buffalo Pimp. Thanks a lot, Thanks, thanks for the beers. <laughs> All right, dude. Take yeah. care. All right. All right. Good deal. Now, uh, back to back guests. Oh, man. This is a, that's another first for Buffalo Pimball. He's uh, been waiting in the green room for quite some time now. He, is. he should I, be ready. His, I, uh, I'm going to uh, give him his due and I'm going to depart uh, and that. let. Uh, Nick Lane managed the show by himself here, so uh, good luck with that. I don't. I shouldn't have to push any buttons. It no, be good. just talk. Talk to Dave. Let me know. I'll switch over. Easy for you, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, all right, all right. David, welcome. Hi, folks. How are you guys all doing? I won't do this. Will just distract me. Um, so I'm gonna try to intro you, but. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> I, I wonder how you intro yourself. That's what I'm curious about. Uh, I'm just a good why, why don't you, why don't you why don't you why don't you introduce yourself to the viewers and then I'll, I'll talk about how I know you because that's worth it before we get to to the expo. Well, I think most of you guys all heard of me through your show for the last time period. Um, I'm the kind of guy that's been around pinball for a while since 2000. Uh, helping restore pinball machines and making it possible for the uh, normal collector to have a machine. You restore machines? Yes, okay. as as much as you painfully try to tell me I don't, but yes. Sure. All right, so we wanted to have Dave on. Um, I've known Dave ever since I got into the hobby back in uh, uh, January 2011. I bought a Stern Iron Man, and it was broken in box, and I panicked, and... Uh, you, you, I reached you, out. I reached out to the community, and somebody recommended Dave Fix. And I came over. And I, I gave you a call, and you're talk for whatever reason you're talking about your mustache on the phone call. And that's I was like, I gotta meet this guy. He sounds fantastic. And uh, so you came over, and uh, I don't think I talked about the mustache. You did. You're like I. You're like I got a curly mustache. I was like I don't know why he's telling me this, but okay. <laughs> I don't remember. He's that, very proud right. of it. You don't forget something like that. No, I guess I wouldn't. Um. So you came over and you, know, you fixed my Iron Man free of charge. So yes, you were you were like the pinball savior. That's right. Got you back on the road. You got me back on the road. Well, we'll get to that. Speaking of the road, that's <laughs> that's one of my favorite <laughs> stories. Uh, of course. Little history before we get into the expo talk because this this is important. But Dave is Dave is sort of a a, a patron saint of, of Buffalo. He uh, does a lot of repairs in the area. If it wasn't for Dave, um, you know this this kind of getting me off and running and in, into the hobby was was crucial. Uh, he's helped a lot of other people just get into the hobby and find machines. So that was 11, right? That was 2011. Yeah, 09, I put my first pinball show on here in Western New York at the uh, Niagara Falls, Niagara Falls Pinball and Barbecue Festival. 
Uh, we had about a hundred machines. Um, that was uh, that was fun. That kind of put me on the map, as it were, for Buffalo because I had to bring thirty machines, and we had other people bring them from other areas. Uh, Phoebe brought some beautiful machines in from Ohio, and uh, Trent came up. He ran my turn. Trent Augustine. Yeah, good friend. Phoebe. Uh, people people know Phoebe, but but so, yeah. for people who don't know Phoebe, what does Phoebe do? Phoebe does Context. some be- well. She does some beautiful back glass restorations and play field restorations. She's probably one of the best. Does she have a website that people can go to? Uh, yeah, she does. Phoebe Smith, Bimbo, or Butterfly Girl. Got to look it up. I don't mind. Okay. But, uh, yeah, Phoebe's great. Uh, she brought some beautiful machines that, and some very rare ones. Stargazer, uh, Cosmic Gunfight, uh, Varkon. I mean, in 09, most people see these games. I remember these were like now now they're a little bit more prevalent shows, but back then it was like under. We just doubled our viewer count as soon as you stepped on camera. You realize that? Well, okay, <laughs> that's fine. You're uh, humble. He's humble. All right, we'll move on. <laughs> what do we go up? Two more people? I know. Yeah, uh, that's anyways. double at this point. Okay. Um, no, no, no. So let me. Uh, we're gonna get into Expo. I, I promise. But let me no, tell my okay. favorite. Let me tell my favorite day fix player. Oh, uh, first okay. of all, you you. When, after I met you, I was like, I, I just want to learn to fix machines. So you would, you would take me, and like, what we would go, there? like, you pick up machines. Anything? No, I, I'm horrible. <laughs> I, I learned, I learned that I hate fixing pinball machines. I learned that I'm no good at it, and my, I just don't have the desire to get any better. My favorite Nick Lane story is from the day you brought in the soldering iron. Somebody sold you. The thing was about this long, you know, and it was like a gazillion watts. And you're like, well, I got this great soldering iron. I'm like, <laughs> at least I had one. I knew that much. Uh, I had a, a, a standard soldering iron that did the job. You and this Godzilla soldering iron. That's my favorite. But that's that's know, your favorite one? That, no, nah, there's other stories I have too that, that are hilarious. Oh, we lost the light? Yeah, that light went out. It, of course. Hey, it's a maze we're still on. Um, I know the story you're going to talk about, and let's let's just start off first. <laughs> Do you want to you wanna defend yourself? No, no, we I don't want to talk about it. that. I just want to just put you... So young Nick Lane wanted to do. I said, "Hey, you want to go with?" Young Nick Lane, me? he's five years older than me. Yeah, he wanted to go with me on some uh, raids, as it were. So the first pinball trip I took him on to was uh, we went down to Mike uh, Pesak yeah. and Rob Burke's place uh, in the old truck. Yeah, and that was fun. Yeah, you had a truck that's from 1980, and like it would leak fumes into the cab, <laughs> so that was good. <laughs> yeah, it was one way of getting high. Anyway, we got down there and. Uh, Nick just didn't know what to do with that uh, the Mike Pasek's warehouse warehouse pin. So con- again, contact who is Mike Pasek in the pinball world? Mike Pasek is of course pinball Mike. Um, also, okay. more context. A little more context. He is one of the founding fathers of Pinball Expo. Okay, awesome. So and Rob Burke, my other friend, he's and, the and, other and chairman. Mike Pasek was an operator. That's why, because when we went out there, he yes. had like a barn or barns or warehouses like just full of like. Some things were organized, but some things were just like almost a pinball graveyard. Like he just has a ton of stuff, like He's overwhelmingly so. We went through the first three buildings on his property, three buildings, okay? One was just miles and miles of file cabinets, all paper and everything. Okay. I mean, you could go back to any pinball machine back. And then the other buildings were just full of pinball. And then that was not even it. Then he took us out to lunch, and then he took us to his big warehouse where he had close to... 500 yeah he had a lot like it was um we you, can like get, you can get lost. lost in there yeah you can get lost in there <laughs> it was and 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 we saw titles from europe different titles all over the place and they were just amazing some some amazing games i remember seeing eight or nine uh eight ball deluxes just sitting but there. they all need to work like you oh, can't yeah. just grab them and play no, like no, they, no, no. they weren't not they even... weren't like plug them in and let's go yeah but I know a lot of people when those uh, Playfield re- reproductions, CBR released those, and uh, Gene Cunningham released his uh, Playfields, those machines sold fast because people wanted those. They're very desirable machines. A lot what, of what is Mike doing with Does he still have that warehouse, or what is he doing with those machines? Unfortunately, he lost that warehouse, okay. and a bulk of those machines got sold off. A lot of people got really good deals, uh-huh. and uh, he's moved to another little location, but he's Still got that, and he, and he still tells me to this day. I still got other warehouses you haven't been in yet. Going into his basement, that's where all the primo stuff is. Like, you know, you're, you're looking at uh, brand new play fields, play, brand new black glasses, plastic sets. Just unbelievable what he has in that house. Cool. 
So, but anyway, that was your first experience in the truck. Then I try to talk Nick into a favor. I asked him very nicely. I said, hey, I'm getting a machine at the Ohio show, and I'm trying to keep it hush-hush on my wife. <clears throat> now she's going to download this and catch a hold. Anyway, I asked Nick, I said, hey, you going to act, are you going to go to the, the uh, Ohio show? He says, no, no, I wasn't going. I says, well, I'll give you a free ride. He goes, what are you talking about? Bring the truck. Just bring it down, and uh, you can. All right, I'm going to cut you off there. That's a, that's a good that's a good setup. That's a good setup. And I, I said, I look at Dave. I say, is it going to work? And you pause for a moment, like you you were considering it. Like the first of all, the answer when somebody says your your car or truck going to work, like, of course it is. You you took like a a five second pause and you go, yeah yeah, it'll work. So that was my first sign that there'd be a problem. So. Foolishly, because I'm I'm just like hungry for pinball at this point. There's still nothing in Buffalo. I know very few collectors. This is like one of the first shows. I wanted to get down there, so I was like, okay, this sounds like a horrible idea, but I think I, you had two machines. Make this happen. Time. Yeah, I had like two pinball machines. It's probably like 2012. Yeah, I think easy. around that. And uh, so then like you're down at Ohio, and you I sent took the car. You yeah. took your car that works, <laughs> and uh, you messaged me, and like here's how to start my truck. <laughs> And it, here's here's it's easy. Here's how to start my truck. And there's seven steps. <laughs> Do you? I don't yeah, even, I remember the. Seven I think steps. you say. I, think, I still use those seven steps. You know. And like, you say that without a hint of irony. Like you're just like <laughs> you in your mind. It's like easy to start your truck in seven steps. But I'm looking at it, and still, I still went through with it. That's the thing. So I get in. And it the next started, day. didn't it? It started <laughs> in the seven steps, just like described. I think everything's going all right. Uh, I have the windows rolled down, so I don't have asphyxiation. And then. Uh, I stop and get some food. I'm probably like 45 minutes out. Get breakfast. I get back in the truck and it doesn't start. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you remember that. I call you. I you, call me. and I'm You like, yell at me because you're like, what did you do to the truck? <laughs> yeah, what did you do? You're like, what did you do? Not like, oh, Nick, I'm sorry, man. That You're like, like two well, hours wait, out. What did you do? Well, yeah. I'm like, yeah. What, what did, you, did, you, did you leave it? I thought for sure that you had the lights on or you left. Barry got killed or yeah. something. Find out later. It's, uh, what was it? Like a cap, like a twenty, you know, twenty five dollar part on the truck decided to let go on your trip, and it's how it's yeah, how just decided yeah that <laughs> truck was in perfect condition. What a shocker to everybody no, that it, it wasn't, wasn't in perfect working. condition. You know, I know, that, I know. It's a pin hauler. What do you want? I mean, so uh, it it's like an, I didn't, I never made it to the Ohio show. I no. went, I got a ride back uh, in the tow truck. That was uh, fun. Yeah. No, that you know, five hour day, uh, no pinball. Back in the truck, and uh, you still continue to drive that truck around for another two, three years. That's, that's a sad point. And it broke truck. down. I still have that truck. And it's still moving machines with that truck. Weren't you bringing a machine to my place, and it broke down, and then Neil had to come and get oh, it? Oh God! You were yeah, picking brand up a brand new machine in a box. You, he was. It. Oh, you were getting an ACDC premium. You're that's picking right. it up for me. That's okay. Right. And guess what? You get. A, I get a call that your truck broke down. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I'm like, are you yeah. kidding me? Of course, it was great. Neil had his truck. He swung over, picked. We just slid it out of my truck into his truck. You guys took it. I got in with you guys, and the uh, tow truck guy took uh, my truck off to the shop again. That's the fun thing about having a brother who's an auto mechanic. It's like, ne you know, never having a... Uh, well, he's enabling you. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. He, oh, I fixed it. It's all set to go. It lasts about three minutes. But you got a, you got a new truck, so that yes. so far so good. Okay, so, so let's so let's talk about Expo, um, as promised. That's coming up. That's on everybody's mind. How long, how, how many years have you been involved in Expo? I'm going to say in, since in, in, in contributing to Expo. Contributing since 2009. How did you get to the point? Where, and what exactly do you contribute? What's your role in Expo? Um, chief cook and no, no, I, I just wash bottles. No, what I do at Expo is I'm I'm pretty much a, the guy who helps out with all the seminars. Rob Burke and I sit down at the beginning of the season and we talk about all the different uh, speakers we want to bring to Expo and do products. Uh, we reach out to them, try to get them set up to come in and make Expo great. Okay, we're we're giving them the largest, the longest show, and our key point about it is seminar. Okay, this is the show where everybody's coming from around the world to make an announcement. Uh, come on, Jersey Jack revealed all of his machines at Expo. Uh, he made announcements that he's making the machines on podcast, but when it came down to it, he was there at the show to show off these machines. Which he's um, going to be doing again this year. That's correct. 
he's revealing the third machine. So that's gonna be that's gonna be exciting. That's gonna be on Thursday night. Uh, we all know where we're gonna be at that. Um, also, Highway Pinball. He went and brought his machine to the show. Uh, I mean, so if you think about it, even Stern has always stepped up their game and made sure that, hey, you want to go see a tour of a, a pinball factory? There you go. And we, and we, talk, we talk, I came out saying expo, but there might be some people listening that don't know what I'm talking about. So this is the Pinball Expo. Yep. It's in, in somewhere, Chicago. In Chicago. And it starts this Thursday. This Thursday, yes. And it lasts until Sunday? There, is there um, Saturday some, night. Saturday night. Okay, so, so what happens is, is okay, so Wednesday night, we have the Bumper Blast part Party. So we welcome all the guests. The game room or some of the free play games have already come in. Some of the deals have already been starting to be made, okay? I've walked in on Wednesday at 4 o'clock, walked in the room and seen machines being set up. And, of course, it's not open to the public yet. It will be open in a few minutes. I already see signs on machines for sale and people already saying, want to buy this? I mean, you're talking about uh, Batman Forever, uh, $1,800, completely all shopped out. It looks beautiful. That was about so the prices have gone up and gone down, but you know, you sometimes walk right in and you can find deal. And that's the true thing about Expo is deals just roll through. Machines are always moving in or moving out, coming in, and people are just But what's the what's the focal point of the show? So you can buy machines there. Yes. There's a tournament there, there's yes. announcements, but it's I mean And all the big all the big players in the market have toys, new new mods. You know, whatever they're they're going to have that stuff. New circuit boards. New. We're trying to really hard to bring out the different circuit board companies. We had all tech there when they started. Okay, so they're the ones. All the ballet stern boards that people are now just throwing in their machines left. I mean, it's future spot. You know, um, all the all of those great machines. People all the luck. But we had a lot of people. Over Okay, try to focus that your mic's cutting yeah. a little bit, so maybe just focus okay. on that. Okay. Right. No, I'm just helping you. No, no problem. No problem. So let me let me let me give you a little rundown. Okay, so we're gonna even kick off with uh, Thursday. Okay, we're gonna start off right off the bat with uh, making new backpacks. Okay, there's guys been doing that. There's many guys who've been talking about. It. We've talked about. It. I've talked about it at Expo for quite a few years. Uh, and then, of course, Jim Shelberg, he's jumping in there, as always, the Pin Game Journal guy. He's got tons of videos. Uh, then we have the great uh, pinball collector, Martin Weiss from uh, Germany. He's going to be talking about his uh, funny stories about pinball. And then we got Gary Stern. Gary Stern is going to hop up there at 5 o'clock on uh, Thursday, and he's going to address the entire pinball customer. And then uh, before that... So what is Gary Stern going to talk about? Is it the, is he going to talk about the release of a game, or is it just a general talk? It's going to be his general talk. I believe he's About a three-legged stool? I don't know if he's going to go into the three-legged stool. We've all I heard just that. Hear. And he always talks about it. Like, oh, I've already told this three-legged stool. You're not gonna no, he's it. entertaining. He is very entertaining. But he also opens the room up to questions. And think about it. Here's the owner of a pinball company mm -hmm. opening it up to questions to find out what everybody wants to know. And he takes this stuff to heart, okay? So think about it. A few years back, he was at a pinball show. He was taking down all the information. And what does he bring up? He brings up the titles Ghostbusters. He brought up the titles Tron before Tron came out. He brought up, I want to say, um, two other pins. And all those pins have become pinball machines. So he was really filling out the customers, his, his crowd people to and he's not like a, a president of a company who just like sits behind a table and signs checks and doesn't care and just say give me the money he's interactive with them. so he's very good about that stuff so stern the, the probably the focus is obviously going to be the the batman yes batman 66 uh do you think that they're going to release there's some speculation that they're going to release another game as a surprise do you think that's well i mean first of all you don't know right because if you do, I don't want to. I'm not asking. I'm not asking for inside knowledge. If you have inside knowledge, then I, I know I can't ask this. If, if you're speculating, then that's I'm fair smiling, game, folks. So I'm trying to be nice. But let me let me let me point something to you. Okay, so when you look at different things on the schedule, you'll notice some funny things. Okay, first of all, the Batman party meets um, Adam West. The Batmobile is happening 
then there's going to be a pinball 35th anniversary party and announcement. So would there be something extra? Quite possibly, because there's events not linked together. Wouldn't it all be a trip? So maybe there is some kind of special. I'm just speculating, but normally we kind of try to put it all together. Um, I don't want to forget also before I forget, just before Gary Stern speaks at four o'clock, the Dutch pinball guys are okay. going to bring up their announcement. Oh, they're coming. I thought you said they weren't coming. They have changed everything. And oh, they wow. will be there. Okay. So Dutch the, pinball, Dutch maker pinball. of the big Lebowski machine yes. and the bride of pinball 2.0. Uh, Jap Nata, I think is how you say his name. Sure. Uh, and staff, he's bringing all the guys over. So they're going to be talking about that at 4 o'clock. And then Gary Sheard is going to go following them. Do you think they're going to release, um, announce a new game? Don't know. Okay. It's kind of a, it's kind of a funny thing. They probably do because Lebowski was announced years ago now. Yeah, well, I think they're going to be announcing that the Lebowski's been shipping, hopefully, and out to but, other people. And that's not any announcement. I mean, people can people yeah, have Lebowski, so hopefully it's, hopefully it's a little bit better than that. Right. I, I do hope that. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Well, let's wait I and mean, see. But this is kind of a little bit of a change. So I, like I had said earlier that we hadn't heard anything, but now they're going to be there. Um, so um, uh, let me ask you this before I forget. Sure. Previously, I, I think at least two years ago, I know this, that they were streaming the the talks, their seminars. There is are there... certain talks and certain seminars that will be streamed. Yeah. Okay. And then where can, where can our listeners and viewers go to? Um... Sorry about that. Catch catch a stream of that. That I do, I would say you have to go on a pin side. Pin inside. side will have your information about that. In fact, uh, a few years back we had the pin side group. They're the ones that are streaming certain. Uh, I gotcha. So some no, it wasn't somebody from the expo that organized it. No. Some okay, I see. See, we 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 want to organize. God, that. you should have flown us out there. We would have streamed it. I've invited you for the last four years. You guys still the, haven't made it there. I mean, I don't know. I never saw any uh, oh, any financial oh, offers. Oh, but. oh, financial offers. You get into the show that's a what three hundred dollars show for free and full access, and I'll make sure. You know, all the other pinball uh, podcast guys have been invited out there. Some of them are still talking about it. Nate Shivers and the rest of the group. Yeah, Nate goes out. Oh yeah, Nate's a great guy. Uh, let me let me oh, let's go into Wednesday, uh, Thursday night. There's some big announcements there. Okay, so Dave fix the seminar. Oh, no, 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 not, not that. <laughs> Just... That's the snooze fest in the morning. Uh, of course, Jim Shelberg and John Trudeau, Dwight Sullivan, uh, Zami Yeti, and Jerry Thompson are all going to talk about ghost. Bikes. That's cool. That's fun. And then right after that is going to be Jerry Jack announcement that's gonna be exciting i get them all uh pin side's gonna light up uh, and i Thursday think night. that's the one that's gonna be like on there so and that's key point with pat lawler and staff so oh, cool, cool, cool so you know that's gonna be big yep all right so then we go to the snooze fest at uh, uh friday morning pinball 101 dave fix okay you, you can probably sleep in past that get ready for the 8 30 which is the new perspective mod um, and then here's a new change. We have another guest speaker that we didn't know that was coming in. American Pinball is now oh, been American added, Pinball. Yeah, has been added to the lineup. So Maker of Houdini. We haven't even covered that in the podcast. We will next week probably, but Maker of Houdini. So a lot of every it was a lot of speculation, a lot of controversy all over uh John Papadou coming to Expo and stealing people's money and this whole nine yards and you know this new company, American Pinball, and then he basically shows everybody the magic girl that was being made and shipped, and now all of a sudden, like, hallelujah, they well, see the light. Well, not everyone's saying hallelujah. I, well, I think they're true. so skeptical, they're and, and skeptical. rightfully so. And, you but... know, there, there's, been a, there's been a lull, and there's been a drop in the market where the people are like, didn't know what was going to happen. So that's going to be do. interesting, though. That's an interesting seminar. Yes. you know. Um, so that's, I'm guessing it's going to be packed. Yeah, it will be packed. That's Friday morning? That's Friday morning okay. at 9 a.m. This person's harassing you at this point. Yeah, it's my new worker. He's He just started working for me. But now he's got, I got to call him back. My boss is calling me. I call him about three hours. Okay, then we got Jonathan Joston, who's going to talk about his pinball magazine. Jonathan has okay, got cool. that. Okay, cool. Big thick magazine, and he wants to talk. It's to a me high for quality. One. Oh, it's very nice. Yeah, it's, very a nice even, it's a magazine, but it's like not in the realm of a magazine. No, it's, it's really more, nice. It's more like a 
book, you know. It, it, it's which really I should nice. I should get one. Speaking of which, they, they, he's got quite a few different issues. They're really good. Great. Okay. Then I'm back. I'm bringing my girlfriend Phoebe Smith with me. Um, I didn't have a girlfriend. Pinball girl. I don't know. It's a little yeah. weird, but let's yeah. continue on. Let's make a pinball deal. We're gonna talk about. Okay, you're gonna dress up. We're gonna give away some crazy stuff at the uh, Pinball Expo. Um, pinball Expo itself has donated some great prizes. Stern Pinball, Marco Specialties, um, Color DMC, um, Speaker Light Kits from Speaker Light Kits. have done. Color DMD, so somebody can win a Color DMD. Yes. That's $400. That's pretty good. Coin Taker and Ken's sh- Custom Shooter Rods. Our friend Coin Taker. Yeah. Wow. They, they've, all, they've all stepped up their game and there are going to be some very expensive gifts that we're going oh, to give nice. away. That's cool. And uh, not so special gifts because you got to remember, it's let's make a pinball deal. So there's going to be some zoinks. So some people might be going home with a bag of 500 busted light bulbs. Something All right. along those lines. That's great. So it's going to be kind of fun. Um, then we're going to, then at 11 o'clock, Clay Harrell. Okay, I can't say much enough about Clay Harrell. Clay Harrell, the reason that I got into pinball is hair. Pinball every Thanks a lot, Clay. Yeah, he's he's the guy that kind of really? helped me out in the past. He had his own uh, podcast there for a long time. His videos. Um, I mean, Clay was a great guy, mm-hmm. and he still is. And he's going to talk about his uh, passion, the Ann Arbor Pinball Museum, and having 300 pinball machines set up in the Ann Arbor and keeping them up and running. Wow. Which is not an easy thing, on top of putting together, of course, the Pinball Ninja website, which, Clay, you're definitely due for a new post, so let's you know do something. I haven't had a post. All right. Yeah. Anyway, move, move along. Some move of the highlights. Along. Some of the highlights. Let's go to the highlights. Uh, let's see highlights. Because there's a lot going on. We can oh, be here all my night. Goodness. So one o'clock on Friday, Chicago Gaming is going to name their second pin. Chicago Gaming are the is the company that worked on the remake of Medieval Madness. Right. All so. Right? Doug Duba and uh, Doug Store are going to announce their second pin, which they're going to be releasing. So the rumor, I think the strong rumor is that it's going to be Attack from Mars. Attack from Mars is the front runner. Front runner, yeah. But there is there is the thought that it could be some Monster Bash. Some Monster people have speculated Bash, yeah. Monster Bash. So, so it's gonna both be great games. Game. So I think everybody wins. If, you know, one of those come out. So that's cool. Yes, they are both. And then games. it'd be nice if it was priced lower than Medieval Madness, but I'm not holding my breath. Don't hold your breath. Yeah. Turn blue. So anyway, then we have under that we have some, you know, Duncan Brown. He's got a, a, a thing about where he's talking about lost play fields of uh, Harry Williams. Um, then at four o'clock we have the release from Highway Pinball bringing us Alien Pinball. And it's gonna be it's it's cool. So they're gonna have it there for people to play. They're gonna have it there for people to see. For to see, all see, right. See, and then you can go across the way. Then they're gonna take it over to the location, Twin Peaks. <clears throat> you know, Twin Peaks are anyway. Twin Peaks is a nice family you know, male establishment across the the parking lot. That seems where, like a bad idea, but where, okay. Where they will have the game, they will have the game set right. up, set up for people to play. Way to make make women feel welcome. Congratulations. Well, it's kind of like a twisted kilt. All right, it's just like yeah, you know, lumberjack. That's, that's kind a of girls, poor, you know? poor decision. Okay. Well, anyways, you know, I mean, I they don't learn. Some people don't learn. But God yeah. bless them. They're bringing a new machine. So then, after Alien, we have a uh, couple interesting people that are going to be talking about fast pinball and mission pinball. And these are the guys who are fast pinball and mission pinball. I don't know if you know who they are. They're basically the guys who come up with the new little board. Average joke. Relaxation station sounds like some kind of uh, sounds like a Hooters to me. Yes, yes, it is a Hooters esque. Uh, Hooters esque or a uh, tilted tilt esque yeah. kind of thing. So it's Sorry. a sports. We had a question from the not uh, a gentleman. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I, I can, slight difference. Yeah, slight they have difference. food at that place at one place, and the other place doesn't have food typically. Yeah. So then, let's see. Where am I on Friday at uh, six p.m.? We have the Lloyd Show. Okay, the famous Lloyd Show. LTG. LTG. I always. Do you know what that stands for? The great. I don't know. What is it? I have no idea. He always signs LTG after everything. Lloyd Lloyd the Great. Great. There you go. Thank you, Kevin. Solved a five-year-old mystery for me. There you go. 
Well, you know, it's funny. Lloyd is a great guy. Now, Lloyd really. Uh, well, yeah, he's. I mean, he's in this, he signs it that way. Lloyd. Well, he's the, he's the owner and operator of SNS Billiards, where they have the famous pool hall pinball mm-hmm. establishment up in uh, Minnesota there. And believe it or not, that's what I pattern uh, talked to Barry about pattering uh, Pocketeer after. So okay. Pocketeer is a little bit kind of like that. I told Lloyd that one day, and he goes, why in the hell would you do that? It's the <laughs> most stupidest thing I've ever heard. I'm still trying to get out from underneath this. Thank you, thank you, Lloyd, for bringing some sense into them. You need yes. to talk to them a little bit more. Yes, well, Lloyd tells me nothing about me ever. That's right. uh, and then, of course, we're off. We're off to the uh, big uh, Stern anniversary party. So there's That's be- Friday night, right? Friday night. Okay. And, it, and I, I see this. Now, this is a new schedule, so I don't know what this is, but there's been another announcement that while the Stern 30th anniversary party is going on, I got to comp- make sure this is right, but according to the schedule, Jack Veneri's back. Uh, going to be talking about uh, deep dive into Jersey Jack's pinball. So I don't know if that's a glitch. I got to find out about that. But it'd be kind of weird that they're going to do something special at the same time Stern's got the party going on. So we'll have to you have to post you have to check it out. You have to wait and see. For all those going to Expo, I mean it's going to be a huge. Party. Okay, we've already booked up two hotels working. On so it's like we got a lot of people showing up and they come in from germany japan from all around the world just for this main event this is the this is the show of show uh just for the seminar so so after that uh we get in after we finally wake up saturday morning now we're back on to uh some other things kevin o'connor's gonna talk about his kiss artwork um and then chuck emery bookie pinball he's gonna talk about the new stuff Cool. So he's gonna is he gonna release a new game? We don't know. It's gonna happen at twelve noon on and on uh, Saturday. And I've seen Charlie and Ben Hack usually on a Saturday morning after a long party night. They usually have the sunglasses on deep, so I'm getting ready for that idea. Um, and then my buddy Jerry Stellenberg, he's gonna be back with Multimorphic at one fifteen. He's gonna be talking about everything with the new P three. And the future, and, and and talking about how other people have been using the P3 system, and uh, Lexi Lightspeed, if she's still around, and the, the different things that they've been really working on with Multimorph. So I'm kind of pumped to see them back again. And then we have the autograph session. So here here's your chance when you're at the Expo. This is pretty cool. All the famous designers, all the famous artists, they're all sitting around a table. They're just ready to tell you the stories that you've always wanted to hear about your machine. Sign your back class, sign your play field, sign a flyer, and just talk. To them. And you, uh, trust me, you meet these guys, and they're like, just glad to see you, glad to meet you, and they become friends. Can you tell John Borg? Uh, maybe you've told him this, but he's my hero. He needs to let him know that. I do. I have told Every time. John Borg that. I'm I, his biggest fan. I, I tell him you're his biggest fan. That's why you had in your collection some uh, flyers that I had signed. I have them still. Yeah, yeah, I have it. Yeah, Borg. Yeah, I have a line of uh I remember uh, about two years ago, I was at um, Churchill Cabinet on a super secret, uh, uh, super secret uh, <laughs> inspection or, or, or tour. I'm, I'm not. I'm not giving out autographs. I won't be there, Zentron, unfortunately. But Dave, can people get your autograph if they? Uh, yeah, not on blank checks, but you can. Have it. All right. Um, but B- Borgi was at uh, Churchill Cabinet, just in the back, signing playfields that afternoon. And it was the coolest thing. So, you know, John's like, "Hey, fix, how you been? What's going on?" You know, "Oh yeah, let me show you." And he's and he's like showing us all the the uh, the new playfields that he's working on. So it was, but they were already released. There were no secrets. No, those were hidden away. I didn't get to see any of those that I can talk about. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I just got a. I just got an idea in a contest because oh, cool. we'll have some fun. All right. So if you're listening to this and you go to Expo. And you see Dave Fix, the first person who gets a Dave Fix autograph and then posts it on our Buffalo Pinball Facebook page, will um will give you a free T-shirt. Okay. Um, we're making a run of new T-shirts. Um, it's on me. Uh, I'll buy that for whoever does that. And uh, you post it on our, our on our Facebook page, Buffalo Pinball. Um, 
I will ship it out to you if you're in the U.S. If you're international, then we'll, we'll we'll work something out. But that's the contest. We'll see if anybody follows through and gets your autograph. And they can usually spot you because you have a a, a, a chapeau, a little a hat on. Black cowboy hat. There you go. The you famous, can't miss that. The bl- famous black cowboy hat. So we'll and, see. Uh, and a famous like Western style curly mustache. Which you see right here in the picture. I grow it just for Expo God, every that mustache. year. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin, uh, this, we'll do a second runner-up. So if you get the second person to post an autograph, Kevin will send some stickers. Okay, we'll, we'll spring for it. It's worth it. Um, but the real value is the autograph. That's what I'm trying to impress upon everybody. It's not the nonsense <laughs> shirt and whatever we got to give away. It's worth it. Okay. And you have some trading cards, too. I do. Can you bring, hey, can you I have, will bring, can you have you trading what? cards so the person who asks you for an autograph, you can say, okay, Make sure that why do you want this or where did you hear about this? Yes. And if they reference it, you give them that trading card and then uh, they'll post it on Facebook. And I will give out uh, five trading cards, one to the first and the second. They'll win their special gifts. Yep. And, the, and third, fourth, and fifth will get a special, just a special card. Uh, so I want to ask you this question. Um, sure. I've never been to Expo. One day I'm going to get there. But some of the, the comments that I heard in – um, the last couple of years, there's there's more pinball shows going on now, probably more than ever. Um, yeah. cer- certain ones have stepped up and they've gotten really good reviews. Like the Texas Pinball Festival comes to mind. Excellent, um, excellent show. Some people were disappointed in Expo. Um, maybe in the last couple of years, are people listening to the feedback from uh, you know um, people who are being vocal about it? And if so, what is being done or what might be different this year to to address some of those concerns? We address. Every feedback has been personal, and every year we've talked about it. So, like, for years, years and years and years and years, we always had shut down the game room and the the expo hall where all the sponsors and all the parts, and we shut it down for the dinner. And we were like, why? And everybody was always screaming about it. They're not paying for, you know, whatever go hear somebody speak about, you know, future past. There's a lot of people that will go there. That's cool. But uh, so we finally acquiesced and we allowed, we opened the doors. We opened the doors to the game room. last week. Now I guess we're, we're opening the doors to the exhibit hall. So that, those will still be running while the, um, and that's a big change because there used to be a time when we locked it down, chased everybody out, sent everybody upstairs a half hour, an hour before the dinner to get changed and dressed up and back down there. But you're talking about 1980s mentality, how seminars were working. Now, care less, or they want to, or they want to download it later, which is very possible. All video, all audio recordings of all the seminars will be available at Pinball News. Martin uh, from Pinball News very diligent about making sure that he edits and make sure it sounds proper and then he makes sure they're up there and they're still up there for the last couple of years so if you miss a seminar a few years back go to pinball news you can find it you can download it you can listen to um some of them. my seminars are up there they they cure insomnia very well so you want to i'm falling asleep right now it's great I, I, I know well it's kind of the only reason you're falling asleep is kind of you got little technical difficulties started that's another story but, um, <laughs> hey, I have to throw it out there, too. You guys are, like, you're throwing it at me. So. Fix, man. So, so and, and then uh, after that autograph session, we're going to have Joe Kamakow and Gary Stern. They are the Make-A-Wish charity auction and banquet speakers this year. Uh, they're going to talk about 35 years of pinball, starting with Laser War and probably even before that because these two guys are, are founded in the, in the industry. Uh, I know... Uh, Gary's father <laughs> raised him in the pinball industry. And, of course, um, Joe Kamakawa's father, he was an operator, uh, manager of a large distribution network, and he was in all those trade shows, too, going back with pinball as a child as well. So the, you're talking about two guys who are very well-rooted. Now, with that being said, they have come back, and they've put together back in 66, which is very exciting because here we have Joe Kamakow. Now everybody talks about. Um, and I'll I'll give you a little you know gaps that you might not have heard or you've heard, so this kind of fills it in. It's going to be like Batman: The Dark Knight came out from uh, 
Stern a couple of years back. 2008. 2000. However, there are changes. Oh, yeah. Greatly changes. And you also have new code. And one of the most interesting things that I thought of is that you have a guy by the name of Eugene Jarvis, the owner of Roth Thrills. Uh, he is pro- and the president of Roth Thrills. Roth Thrills is probably best known for uh, Big Buck Hunter yep. making that game. Uh, they're they're known for tons of and, and the racing game like the Fast and Furious games. And Furious. Yeah, I know them also because I work for Ice and uh, we do a lot of games with them as well. But Eugene has joined on and worked on the code for Batman sixty six. So you're talking about a guy who's done such games as Firepower uh, with Steve Ritchie, uh, a couple games from way back in Atari years. Okay, and Eugene is this great coder. Kind of thing and and great rule game, and he's doing a game. It's been a long time since his last game. I want to say I can't think of the last game it was, but it's got to be somewhere around F fourteen time, somewhere in there. But he's back, and I saw a picture. This is a picture that was thrown to me from my good friend uh, Josh Sharp, showing Eugene and Larry Demar. And I'm like, okay, and that was before it was announced. Code. So who knows? Maybe even Larry jumped in on the code on this, which would be absolutely huge. But we'll find out more, of course, at Expo. So, you know, when it's all said and done, you got to get yourself a big show. Cool. Well, I, I appreciate that preview. Kevin and I wanted to talk about Expo, so um, we're thrilled to have you on to it's give a rundown here. for the part of the people who helped put this together. Uh, thank you for your time, Dave. Not a problem. It was great to be out here, and now I have to drive Get ready to go to Expo tomorrow and see a couple days. All right. Well, uh, uh, safe travels. Thank you very much. I'm sure we'll have you on the show again at, at some oh, uh, sure. uh, future point in time. I'm sure there's tons of stories that we we haven't even touched the surface of. I know we talked about it real brief at the last um, Bro, Do You Play Pinball? When Not I even meet. the name of the show. Oh, so Try again. Try again. Uh, well, this is Bro, Do You Even Talk Pinball? So uh, wasn't that Bro, Do You Pinball? Do You Play Pinball? <laughs> I don't know. I, just, I mean, you got so many different. You've only been here. you've only been on it three times. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't even okay. get a shirt. You know, right. what's that have to tell you? Well, they're for sale. Card, they're they're oh, for sale. I, I got it. All right. Um. But yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll be back and we'll talk about some other games. I think I beat all of you on Doctor Who. No, no. Kevin is the only one that I did not beat on Doctor Who the last last show. If you didn't see that, you can watch it's it. It's a fun episode. It was. We just did it this Thursday. Dave was the guest on that, so it was yeah. nice of him to come out twice for that. So thank you very good. much, Dave. We'll have you on again. The whole reason I, I, I decided to start a podcast with Kevin is just to have you on as a guest. So mission accomplished. Oh, wow. Well, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're enjoying this. So. Thank you. Okay, guys. All right, we'll get to you, Kevin. Kevin. So um, right, I got a couple of announcements. Um, one nice. super important that I, I should have made at the beginning of this podcast, and big news. Um, we were out at, at TwitchCon, and there was an important announcement that they made, and that is that uh, Twitch is owned by Amazon. So if you are an Amazon Prime member, okay, you are automatically get Twitch Prime. So you got to sign up for, you got well, you got to go to the account, you got to sign up for uh, uh, Twitch Prime, but it's free, and that has perks. There's uh, no ads on Twitch when you get Twitch Prime. And you get certain uh, discounts on games, and you get certain games for free. But here's the cool thing. Um, one way that you can support us and show us some love, if you're listening to this podcast um, and you have Amazon Prime, you can support us without spending any of your money. It's totally free for you, and it brings in some money for um, our Twitch stream and our, our podcast, and that is you go to uh, Twitch dot, twitch.amazon.com forward slash prime okay so go there and what happens is that when you when you sign up for that which is free you get to subscribe to one ch- twitch channel a month for free so it do, should be this one do you do that <laughs> i would i would kindly ask to take it will take you guys five minutes kindly ask to take five minutes do that and then go to subscribe to our channel on twitch if you don't know what that is just search buffalo pinball onto twitch you'll see a subscribe button on our channel um well you should I don't know how it works. It'll with say Prime. subscribe with Prime. Subscribe with Prime. Yeah, thank you. You just click that and it'll yeah. be like, boom. We get a whopping $2.50 a month when you guys do that, but every little bit helps. Um, it helps unlock emotes and it just shows that um, we're bringing value to you guys. And, and uh, it's just a little way to thank us and uh, keep this kind of mutually beneficial. 
Yeah. So even so, if you don't, if you just listen to the podcast, you can still go and hook it up. And uh, if you never watch us on Twitch and just enjoy doing the podcast, it's a great way to support us either way. Speaking of which, since I'm in selling mode, um, sell it. Because I do all day at work. Uh, so we got some. Oftentimes, we ask where we can get hoodies. That's kind of like the, one of the most popular questions we get. And the answer usually is that, well, we'll do a run at some point because they are expensive. And um, it's a little more difficult than just running a bunch of t-shirts and then selling it over a few months. We need to do pre-orders with this, which is the most dreaded thing in pinball. But uh, we'll make good on it, guys. So here's the deal. Um, we're going to be doing a, a run of Buffalo Pinball hoodies based on the order, pre-orders that we get. Um, on the front of it is the Buffalo Pinball logo. It's a zip-up hoodie. It's American Apparel. It's very high quality, um, super comfortable. I love wearing mine in the uh, fall and winter. And then on the back is our kind of second alternative logo, which is the uh, skull getting hit by a pinball. It's kind of they got that punk rock vibe that we were going for. Um, super cool. If you guys are interested in it and gals are interested in it, uh, you need to order by October 24th. They are $50 and then include shipping in the U.S. If you're outside the U.S., just message us and we'll, we'll try to uh, figure out what shipping would be to your uh, country. Uh, but you can order that by going to buffalopinball.com slash merch. Do so by October 24th because once we get those orders in, uh, I don't think we're going to be doing hoodies for a year or two. Uh, basically, they're 50 bucks, and when all is said and done with such a small run of them we don't make any money on it so it's just um trying to meet the demand that people have asked for us and uh we want to want to get that out to you guys we're getting all the pre-order jokes in the uh, chat right now yeah and rightfully so <laughs> thanks a lot papa duke <laughs> papa duke ruined it for everybody no more pre-orders and shit be but it's all yeah all good thank you cnk so he's ordering one thanks, thank buddy. you cnk um i think that's gonna do it Kevin, right, are before you good? we go i have a challenge okay I, it's a challenge not only for our viewers slash listeners, but also for Nick Lane. Oh, my God. Okay. So here's the deal. I'm listening. We have an email account. My challenge to you is to send us some feedback. Send us uh, questions, comments on this episode, things you want to hear uh, on future episodes. More, send us a, a suggestion of a game you'd like to, us to review. Because we, yeah. we like to review games every, every episode. Oh, Zampin Zampinator. Zampinator. Thank the, Zampinator. Thanks for the thank follow, man. The there we go. There's a line, man. Yeah. Um, so email us. The email address is talkpinball at gmail.com. And my challenge to Nick Lane is to actually check the email account. All right. I will, I will the check next it. Episode. So I will we check can it. Use that feedback yeah. on the next episode. We will read your feedback. I will check it. Uh, and we'll we'll get it involved in, in I think show. I think we're gonna do a podcast next Monday as well, so we can recap because there's been so much news in pinball. We'll talk about Expo. Uh, it should be fun. And we we may have some news to share next. You got some announcements. Can we talk about what we're doing yet? Uh, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday? Or I don't no? know. Okay, we uh, won't. We won't. Uh, we'll, we'll keep the people Here's, here's a, what we can say. Right. We're, we're doing a, a bro show, of course, uh, on Thursday. Mm -hmm. That's at 8 o'clock. And uh, we're going to be playing The Hobbit. We are, yes. Kevin's going to teach us how to play The Hobbit because he's mm -hmm. had it for almost a month now. So he should know what the heck is going on. Yep. Um, and it's going to be uh, bros versus bros. Yeah, the Civil War battle. So Kevin is going to be the guest, and he's going to play me, Martha, Jane, Rob. So you're going to get all five of the bro members, which is rare, in one room together. And we'll so uh, that's going to be fun. Jay's already complaining that <laughs> he's got tears that we're playing a game that Kevin's been playing. Oh, he's been playing yeah. it for four weeks yeah. straight. Yeah, he's crying in the. That's Facebook why you're going to lose, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> so you a little get to know your bro action. Uh, a little Hobbit, and uh, what more do you want? And uh, I guess I'm gonna stream a game tomorrow, I think, because you got to do some studying, right? Yeah, man, so, I got all this stuff going on. Uh, so. I, I think my my camera equipment set up on Walking Dead Premium, so I'll do that tomorrow. That's gonna be fun. There you go. And then uh, we'll see you to uh, hopefully tomorrow night, eight o'clock. All right, cool. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, check us out. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll do the uh, all the the, the websites and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, do that. So, this is the only one. Um, check us out, uh, buffalopinball.com on the web. Uh, we are on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Buffalo Pinball. So YouTube.com slash Buffalo Pinball, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Facebook, we have a group. It's Facebook.com slash group slash Buffalo Pinball. And if you're on Steam, the gaming platform, you can hook up with us on Steam slash group slash Buffalo Pinball. You can, uh, we can compare Pinball Arcade scores there. We can hang out. Yeah. It'll, it'll give you alerts when we go live on Thursday nights and stuff like that. Thanks to Tig for hooking all that up, too. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Later.